What is going on guys, Gemma here, and back again for that midweek retro gaming video. And I say retro gaming because in this channel, on my channel, we cover all generations gaming. So if you're new here, make sure you crack that subscribe button. Sit back and enjoy the ride because today I'm going to be taking you guys through my Nintendo GameCube collection, which predominantly is PAL. But at the end of the video, I'm going to stitch in some kind of B-roll with my Japanese GameCube collection, which was sent to me by Matt, a loyal subscriber, a number of years ago. And they sit on the cube section just behind the, uh, the light here. So sit back, enjoy. Let me know your recommendations. And if you like retro gaming, I want to hear from you in the comments. Tell me what your favorite retro gaming console is of all time. Slam a comment below and let's get into it. There's quite a few piles. I've got one, two, three piles here. Um, it's not the best GameCube collection in the world. It's not my preferred console to go to. The Super Nintendo is. Um, but sit with me and let's take a look. What I'm going to do is we'll go through this in no particular order, okay? I don't have time to kind of organise all of this because I'm just far too lazy. So we have a nice copy here of Enter the Matrix. This is not a GameCube exclusive. This was also released on the PlayStation 2 and I freaking loved this. At the time, I was so into the Matrix. Like, I remember Specsavers doing a deal on being able to buy replicas of all of the, it was Neo's, Trinity's and Morpheus's um, glasses. And it was around the same time that I first played this on the PS2 um, and the graphics look great still by today's standards. Um, I, I just love it. You know, if you've played, if you've watched The Matrix, then you can imagine what to expect from a Matrix game. Bullet time, the kind of being chased, the high octane, really, really good stuff. This is boxed complete. Um, and I think it would be nice for The Matrix to make a return. I, I'm a huge fan of The Matrix. I love the Animatrix as well. Um, next up, we got Final Fantasy Crystal Chronicles. Um, not my fave, but yes, as it says on the back here, you can use the... Um, there's just so much versatility with it, up to four players. And I think that, you know, something like the GameCube and N64 were always fantastic because there was such an emphasis on couch co-op not just two players but four players and it's really nice to be able to have a Final Fantasy game with just more than yourself you know you can sit chill again it's not the best Final Fantasy game by any stretch in fact I've heard a lot of you people out there say that you don't even like it but nonetheless if you do kudos to you um Taz Wanted we'll go through these next few this, this can be quite a long video uh, we got Taz Wanted um don't remember I think this was from a charity shop if I remember correctly, some of these may be familiar to you guys from pickups, but I believe this was from a charity shop. Now this, I have no interest <laughs> in National Hockey League. Um, this is NHL 2003 and it says on the front here, this is for my North American guys, Chris Pronger, Pronger? I mean, dude, that means nothing to me as many English footballers might mean nothing to you. I don't know who he is. I don't even like NHL. In fact, I don't even know where I got this from, but it's in the GameCube collection. Now this next game is a series that's resonated with myself and my brother since the PlayStation 1 days. And I think has been very consistent in that there's a nice quantity of games out there that hold a reputable quality as well. And I'm talking about Need for Speed, this one being Need for Speed Underground 2. Um, what can I say, man? I mean, it, it is a racing game, plowing through the cities, you know, beautiful lighting, beautiful colour, um, always a top soundtrack. I mean, I just love it. And it was my brother back in the day. Um, I think he had a copy of it, actually, on the PlayStation 1. And that's where I kind of discovered the need for speed. Um, now, what would a Nintendo GameCube console be without a copy of Mario Kart Double Dash? Now, I own the console variant this somewhere. I think it's actually on the cubes. Um, again, phenomenal for your couch co-op four player. Balloon Battle is my absolute fave 
Obviously you've got your Grand Prix and this was absolutely mint because this was the first Mario Kart in which you had interchangeable characters which proved to be a successful recipe for us gamers to dive into and taste. Do you, do you like my metaphors here? Uh, what the hell? But Double Dash, if you've not played it, like honestly get on this. A lot of people slate it but I think it's fantastic. Really, really top game. Next up then we've got a copy of Sonic Heroes and we got Resident Evil 4. Um, now we'll talk about Resident Evil 4 but first we got Sonic, uh, Sonic Heroes, it says 4 teams, 12 superheroes, grind rails, fly, race, power your way through the mind flipping stages. It is a Sonic game, it is eccentric, it is bright and it is packed full of uh, different characters to play through. Back in my day it was Sonic and Tails and then Knuckles came along in Sonic 3 but now there's just there's so much stuff and you know I think even something like this back in the day just blew my mind because I just completely lost track of who was who. Um, and then of course Resident Evil 4, arguably, arguably, my, my opinion, the best, the, the, Resident Evil 4 was the last of the best Resident Evil games until Resident Evil 7. Now I know we have Code Veronica fans on the Dreamcast. Um, I'm not a massive fan, but like certainly Resident Evil 1, 2, 3 and 4 were just phenomenal. This feeling very, very different to the, the uh, first three games, of course, because it's it's just like, I was like, where's the mansion? Where's the, where's the, where's the zombies, dude? We got like, I'm like starting out in this farmers, farmers with pitchforks chasing me. But if, fortunately for us, it was a formula that works. And it's a formula that still proves successful today as we've got the HD remaster on the PlayStation 4. We got more, 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 baby. Uh, we got Mario Party 4. Um, am I a Mario Party fan? Not massively. Do I crave Mario Party games? Not massively. But, but... The collector in me, rather than the player, likes to have your Mario Parties in the collection. So I guess I'm more of a collector of Mario Party compared to like being a player, for example. But hey, let's keep going. Uh, we got, I can never ever pronounce this, Echo Mania. I used to think back in the day this was like Ego Mania or something. But again, I think I found this on a charity shop run. I believe one of the best ones I'd ever find when I found like a load of games for like 33 pence. Um, and it also included this, Donkey Konga. And the bongos are just over there behind the sofa. So super gnarly little rhythm game, Donkey Konga. Not my thing, but again, I have fun with it. It's not a serious game. It doesn't take itself seriously. Um, but yeah, there we go, Donkey Konga. Let's continue, we're nowhere near done. So we got up next, Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets. Um, Harry Potter games are, and still hold their value actually. They really, really do. There was, I was reading somewhere um, recently, one of the Harry Potter games was one of the best selling games on a particular console. I don't know if it was the GameCube, I'll have to check it. Um, we got the Sonic Mega Collection, which is a really nice compilation. We got Sonic 1, Sonic 2, Sonic 3, Sonic and Knuckles, Sonic 3D, Sonic Spinball, and Dr. Robotnik's Mean Bean Machine. Now, I remember Eggman, whatever you want to call him, it's Dr. Robotnik. In fact, I'm going to put a poll up in the cards. Is it Eggman or is it Dr. Robotnik? Make sure you vote in the poll. Now, this was another game. Um, that I got super super cheap. I think 33 pence was this and it does it's quite obscure to find it was from a charity shop It's a nice little puzzle game um, And then of course when Matt sent me the Japanese GameCube games he um, I was fortunate enough to find a copy of the freeloader which enables you to play um, Japanese games on uh, PAL or NTSC GameCube not Master System, so I don't know why it's wedged in with the games, but I'm going to keep it there. Um, now, this is decent to get. You need to get yourselves a copy of the Legend of Zelda Collector's Edition, which includes the Legend of Zelda from the NES, the Legend of Zelda 2, the Legend of Link, sorry, um, Ocarina of Time and Majora's Mask, with a playable demo of Wind Waker. Um, the case is battered, um, but it comes with manual, my copy does. The case is absolutely battered. I could really do 
with another case for that one uh, we've still got more stuff here so we'll just fly through this next little pile because we're, we're just, it's, just, it's just insane this is amazing um so we got blood omen 2 the legend of zelda twilight princess super mario sunshine another one of those 3d super mario games that just makes you smile from ear to ear again a game i didn't even like back in the day because i really loved my side scrollers i was very firm on wanting side scrollers um so it took me a lot to adapt to 3d marios and sunshine has really grown on me we got luigi's Man mansion uh, raymond Ho hoodlum havoc sonic adventure 2 battle harry potter quidditch world cup tony hawk skater pro skater let's get it right three and ssx tricky so again not necessarily, I mean, there, there are exclusive games in here like Twilight Princess, but something like SSX, SSX, blah, 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 blah. SSX Tricky were very, very common on PlayStation 2, um, very popular on PlayStation 2, actually, because up until then we had Cool Borders as the prominent snowboarding game. 1080 on the Nintendo 64 just kind of started to refocus people's minds on snowboarding games. And then SSX Tricky came out and whoa, Mate, the, the soundtrack, the colours, the tracks themselves, the uh, co-op ability, man, it was so, so good. Um, so that was really, really gnarling. And we've got a pile here, we've got a pile here, and we've still got the Japanese um, GameCube games to go. So while you're here, gamers, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and leave a like if you are into gaming from any genre. Mo moving on then, we got Harvest Moon, A Wonderful Life, Bloody Roar, Primal Fury, the Legend of Zelda Wind Waker, which I'm going to talk about, Paper Mario, The Thousand Year Door, the original Resident Evil, and Spyro Enter the Dragonfly. Now let's just kind of hone in on Wind Waker because when I see Wind Waker out and about, and I see it quite often, let's take CEX for example, as most people have been in a CEX, 28 quid. So I think it holds its value and I don't believe it's the best Zelda game out there. I don't even like Wind Waker. Um, and the reason I don't like it is because I'm very narrow-minded and I just can't be doing with the cell shaded graphics. I just can't see past it because that's me. I think the story's great. I think the gameplay is great. I just really struggle to play it. So um, it is what it is. Now this is the special edition because with this you do get a copy of um, Ocarina of Time and then the Ocarina of Time Master Quest, which at the time it says on the back was never before released. Um, so this, the limited edition, can go for a little bit more. So that's that so far. But let me know what you think so far, guys. I've got another pile here. Um, we're kind of ploughing through this, like I said, so we'll continue with this and then I'm going to stitch in the footage for you of the Japanese stuff shortly. So we got iRobots and Gamers, um, kids game, not too fussed. I'm going to fly through these next ones. We got World Tour, which to me looked wicked when I picked it up for like 50 pence. So I'm just going to kind of read this on the back. It says Flipside is giving a stunning performance at Castle Coliseum. Suddenly in the middle of the band's finale, the audible power surge occurs. Lightning strikes and each of the six man band members, one after the other, are vacuumed into the sky. The band's roadie shakes his head in disbelief. Belief? Belief. I have to find them. Um, he jumps through a colour shining portal, grabs his scooter and rides off in search of his idols. So this actually has a story to it. What in the fudge? Um, bit of classic Tom Clancy with some splinter uh, back in the day. I think there was like a small portion of my friends which were kind of like, you know, Splinter Cell versus Metal Gear Solid. I don't know if that happened where you grew up, but it definitely happened where I grew up. Um, we got a FIFA, which I don't, I, I just don't care for. I kind of didn't really like FIFA after FIFA 95. I do still have the old guilty pleasure game of FIFA 95. Uh, True Crime Streets of LA. Star Wars Rebel Strike Rogue Squadron 3. Can't get wrong with a bit of Star Wars. Sonic Adventure DX Director's Cuts. Um, again, there's a plethora of Sonic titles uh, from the GameCube era. Billy Hatcher and the Giant Egg. Oh, I actually have another copy of Donkey Konga, which is, is mint. Um, Minority Report, Everybody Runs. In fact, I'm gonna put my double just there. Um, Terminator 3 Redemption, which again, I picked up recently from, I think, is it CX or is it a charity shop? Um, we got Wave Race Blue Storm, 
Lemony Snicket's A Series of Unfortunate Events and Lost Kingdoms. So I actually am surprised <laughs> at how many PAL GameCube games I have. I didn't believe it was that much because they're kind of hidden behind the small CRT TV um, television here. I'll play my retro stuff on that. Um, so that's, that's not too bad. Like I said, it's not the best GameCube collection, but if you're a fan of your Japanese games, you need to check this next clip out because I'm just going to take you through what I've got and I want you guys to let me know some of your recommendations before we conclude. So there we go, PAL and Japanese Nintendo GameCube games. I hope you've enjoyed this video. It's been a longer video, which is awesome. Um, I just want to say a couple of things about what's coming up. We've got a video dropping Friday, streams all weekend of Breath of the Wild on the Switch. I'm going to Doncaster Gaming Market on Saturday. I'm getting a lot of questions. Are you going to be there? If so, I'll say hi. Like, yeah, I'm going to be there. Just stop me. I don't care what I'm doing. Just say hi. I'd love to talk to you guys. Uh, it's always nice just to say thank you for the support. So I will be there and that means a huge retro game hunt will be coming. So stay tuned gamers. But for now, I need to go and get my cat from the vets. He's broken his leg. I hope the little monkey's all right. I'm gonna leave it there guys. Take care, my name is Gemma. I'll see you in the next one. See you soon.